When is a TSR game not a TSR game? When it was printed between the fall of TSR in 1997 and the rise of D&D 3.0 in 2000. That's where Alternity lands, the last TSR science fiction game printed. It's marketed as a modern to futuristic game, but it's best known for the science fiction genre. When your cover art is a space marine and the love child of Garrus, Vicarian, and Zookmoy, it's going to be received as a science fiction game. So how does the last RPG created by TSR hold up? I'm Mr. Welch, and in this Mad Musings, we are looking at the past future of a dying titan. Alternity was written in 1998 by Bill Slavicek and Richard Baker, who had been part of TSR for several years at this point. The game was meant to be a replacement for the Amazing Engine system, which was TSR's generic science fiction RPG. TSR had shut down all secondary titles in 1993 and replaced them with Amazing Engine, but it died a year later. Years later, the decision was made to create a new science fiction RPG from the ground up. But when the game was nearing completion, TSR was bought by Wizards of the Coast. Fortunately for this video, Wizards of the Coast kept the games in production under the old TSR name until 3rd edition D&D came out, at which point old TSR was no more. Alternity was launched with two hardback books, the Player's Guide and the Game Master's Guide. It had a few things in common with D&D, like six stats, though will and personality replaced wisdom and charisma. It used a D20 for your primary die, but it's inverted. You want to roll low in Alternity. It's a class level system with four primary classes, and the level system disguised a bit with a threshold system that only allowed you to spend your XP once you had acquired a certain amount. And that amount went up every time you reached a new threshold. The stats were on a 4 to 16 scale. Character generation was point by from the ground up. There were six starting races to go with the four classes, and the psychic class was added later as an optional one. The four starting classes were your general classes with combat ops, diplomats, free agents, and tech ops. The game did start with some psychic rules, but that part of the game came into its own with a dedicated splat book later. Every stat has a derived attribute, and most of them have a resistance modifier. The higher the stat, the harder it is to best you at a contest of that ability. Most derived abilities are a combination of stats, so it makes it hard to use any of them as a dump stat. Of note is intelligence, which determines your starting skill points. And since skills are how success is determined in Alternity, having a bottomed-out intelligence means you aren't going to have many skills at all. Just something to think about. The mechanics use a closed skill system, where your difficulty is always your skill level. You roll a d20 and try to roll under your stat plus your skill. For an average task, you roll a d20. The higher your stat or skill, obviously the greater chance of a success. People who are more talented can do better things on an average roll. The modifiers come into effect in the form of dice that add or subtract to your total. You want subtractions in this case. If you have a slight advantage, you roll a d4 and subtract that from your total. A minor penalty adds to your total. The bigger the penalty or the advantage, the larger the die that gets rolled. Truly impossible tasks require you to roll 4d20 and try to hit a target number around 20 for the most skilled characters. Not likely. It's not enough that you have a simple success or failure system. There are steps of success that give you additional bonuses. If you manage to roll half or less, that's a good success, and it's better than just any old ordinary success. If you manage to roll a quarter of your skill total, then that's an amazing success, which is the best success you could possibly want. These successes can be anything from additional damage, avoiding getting hurt, completing a task with increased speed, or scoring a really good deal on Space Rebox. It was an interesting mechanic, completely original from anything TSR had come up with before, with their previous science fiction games being percentile based like Star Frontiers, or just lifted completely from D&D like Buck Rogers. As mentioned, there are multiple derived stats you have to calculate by looking up the appropriate charts. Personality gives you last resort points, which are your typical fate, karma, luck points in other games. You can spend them to improve successes, but once spent, they're gone until you spend XP to buy more of them. And remember, you don't get XP until you've reached your level threshold. You will also find how many actions you can take a turn, up to a maximum of four. Before you decide to go all in on your action points, there is a caveat. It's really hard to use all of them. When you roll initiative, you see which phase you start on, starting with an amazing phase down to the marginal phase. If you have one action, you can only go in the marginal phase. Two actions let you go first in the ordinary phase, and then again in the marginal phase. The only time you get to use all four actions in a round is if you roll the absolute best and wind up in the amazing phase. So what happens if you have four actions and only get a good initiative roll? Then one of those actions is wasted and you don't get to activate in that phase. Wounds are divided into different categories as well. There's stun damage, wound damage, and mortal damage. You don't want to get hit by the last one. Weapons have three categories for damage, again divided between ordinary, good, and amazing. Each level can radically increase the amount of damage done. An ordinary success on hitting someone with a space halberd does 1d6 plus 1 wounds, while an amazing success does d4 plus 1 mortal damage. Armor reduces the wounds taken by a random amount, so space chainmail would reduce the damage by 1d6 minus 1, and you take whatever gets through. 
If the armor quality is better than the weapon quality, then the damage type is downgraded. If the space chainmail is good quality, and the space halberd is only ordinary quality, then all those mortal wounds you did on an amazing hit instead just become regular old wounds. This applies double for amazing armor, but none of the armors in the main book were of amazing quality, so those are restricted to like artifacts. The game claims it's for modern and space genres, but the player's handbook gives you mostly science fiction themes. In fact, the player's handbook is nothing but character creation. There's almost no background information in the Alternatives Player's Guide. It does give you a variety of alien races, though, and there's a space marine on the cover, so it's obvious what the initial push for the game was. Of the alien races, you've got the Frawl, or space anorexics. They're the passive talkie types. The Mechalus, or sexy Borg. Sexy, sexy Borg. Expect lots of tech skills. So Shayin are your space salamanders, not the fire-breathing types, the one you find under rocks, only with wings. They're new to the space scene and act accordingly. Tassa are space Australian friends lizards, really fast and agile. Then you've got the space warthogs and the Warren, super strong and technologically backwards. Lastly, there are space humans, which get more skills because humans always get more skills. Skills are divided into broad skills and specialist skills, with the cap on the number of broad skills you can have. Broad skills are a baseline skill group. If you have a broad skill, you have all the sub-skills at level 1. However, broad skills can't be increased with experience. You have to buy up individual skills with your points. Everybody is okay at basic stuff, but if you want to get good, that's going to be the majority of your skill points. Several skills unlock new abilities when you reach a certain level with them. So at skill level 6, you can attack twice with a blade. You can skip the weight and buy the special ability early. It costs the difference between the normal level you unlock it at and your current level. It's a neat mechanic, and it lets you dip into a skill for some specific abilities without having to go all in. Or you just are impatient. The game does have a perk and flaw system, which is pretty simple compared to other games with the same mechanics. There's a limited number of them. You buy them with skill points or take flaws to gain more skill points. If you're playing a character with a limited intellect, it's one of the few ways to get the precious skill points that the game runs on. Of course, this is going to lead to min-maxing, but what game with perks and flaws doesn't lead to min-maxing? So enough about the mechanics. What about the setting? Well, that's where you have to buy more books. The Game Master Guide is filled to the brim with new rules, optional rules, and a guide on how to make new star maps. But that's it. There's no setting contained in any measure of detail with either of the books. Player's Guide is filled with character creation rules, which is great to have that much variety and options in a game. The GM's Guide has rules for starships, mutants, world creation, and an increased look at using skills, perks, and similar, which again is great, but it doesn't leave any room for anything else, unfortunately. Alternity's first campaign was Star Drive, which was your bog-standard science fiction empire-building game setting. Humans find an FTL drive, grabbed a bunch of worlds, fought a big war, found aliens, fought another big war, made peace, and now everybody is happily exploring the stars and finding new things to shoot. There are books regarding new equipment, expanded ship rules, expanded psychic powers, and of course new planets and races. There was even a book that delved into alternate realities, as Sliders was still on the air and hadn't killed off John Reese davies yet, or Sabrina Lloyd or Jerry O'Connell. Damn, that show went downhill quick, didn't it? Regardless, Alternity hopped on the Sliders bandwagon before the show decided to drive off one of the most iconic British actors of stage and screen, and everybody got to watch that show jump the shark faster than a rocket-powered Arthur Fonzarelli in a Las Vegas stunt show. But I'm not bitter. If you want to grab the Star Drive supplements, they're not expensive at all on the second-hand market. I found most of the books for list price on various sites. There's not much of a demand for them. It's got a lot of parallels to Traveler, and that's probably one of the reasons why there's a lack of interest. There's a lot of Traveler books out there, compared to about half a dozen source books for Star Drive and a few modules. If you don't want to play Star Drive, it's at least worth mining for inspiration and hooks. But Alternity didn't die with Star Drive, because there was another show that the game decided to copy, and that was X-Files. This was in the fourth season of X-Files, when it was at its peak. Not the X-Files when Mulder left and everybody was struggling to come up with coherent plots without the main character. So naturally, TSR jumped on the concept and the setting Dark Matter was created. This was more in line with the game's claim that it was for modern and science fiction rather than just straight science fiction space opera that Star Drive was. Dark Matter was done by Wolfgang Bauer and Monty Cook, the guy that gave us Cobalt Press, and the guy that gave us the dominance of Wizards in 3.0 over everyone else. Dark Matter is a world of hidden monsters, psychics, and magic. The tabloids tell the truth, and of course nobody believes them. Players can be agents for government groups like the FBI, private investigators, have mysterious backers. Whatever dark conspiracy tropes you want to do can be done in dark matter. It's got serious shades of the SCP Foundation, but it was created a decade before that particular setting was even invented. It's set in the grim dark darkness of the grim dark 90s, so of course there's going to be all sorts of nasty sharp pointy things waiting for you to blink. Of the two settings, dark matter in my opinion was the better of the two. 
simply because it offered more to the players that they didn't already have. Star Drive, again, had to compete with Traveler and similar space games. Dark Matter had nothing really similar. At least not anything good or something with a dedicated system. Bureau 13 had been around since 93, but that was a comedy RPG. The World of Darkness had several human-specific books, but they seemed more like side projects compared to the supernatural goodness of the core games. Dark Matter gave a lot of range to the players, and you could customize the game to what you wanted. It was a niche product, but it was coming out when dark RPGs were the norm, and the show that defined conspiracy theories was having its best year yet. Dark Matter is even easier to find than Star Drive. It's less well-known than Star Drive, and with the grim, dark fad long gone, there's not much demand. You can find it on various second-hand sites for often less than list price. If you like the system and want to try an X-File setting, it's not an expensive pickup. But finding players might be your issue. Not many people want to play a 20-year-old game to recreate a TV show that's core audience now has jobs and families. It's almost like TSR didn't know what to do with Alternity. They had their space opera game, they had their X-File game, and they still kept trying to find an audience for the mechanics. They converted Gamma World to the Alternity system, like I mentioned in the review of that game. And it went over like a rabid anthro skunk mutant with explosive diarrhea. Because Gamma World players were happy with 3rd edition, and they did not want to switch from the fast and loose system to the hard crunch of Alternity. If you want to know more about the version of Gamma World, check out that video. I'm not going to rehash it here. They did have a crossover using the game license, grabbing the StarCraft license for a box set. It only used the fast play rules, as you played Terran Marines blasting Zerg, and there was little else, as there was not an audience for this game outside the curious. It was a bait to get new players into RPGs, but throwing people the beginner rules and targeting older players at the same time rarely works. It does stand out because unlike other games in the Alternity line, this one is incredibly expensive on the second-hand market. The miniatures cost a ton. The box set I've seen go for over $200 complete. It's less of a game compared to a collectible now. I don't think we'll ever see a PDF, so if you have to get everything TSR or just that big of a StarCraft fan, you can try to get lucky on an auction. Otherwise, it's going to remain a curiosity to you. The game did have a few other crossovers, nothing on the scale that StarCraft had. In Dragon Magazine 259, they gave you the rules for all the weapons in Fallout 2. Well, most of them. They didn't give you everything in the game, but if you needed to take down a borged-out space mutant with a Red Rider BB gun, you had the rules at your fingertips. They sadly didn't include everything, so the Bozar rifle was missing, but they had enough. And it also came out of nowhere, because I figure they were trying to get the rights to fall out, and they just never could seal the deal. Fallout 2 did come out in 98, right when Alternity was one of the few TSR products being made. Still, the article was a nice addition to the game, and a surprise one at that. Alternity lived on after TSR finally went to the great Chapter 11 filing in the sky. It was mined for ideas and mechanics for D20 Modern, with most of the races making it into the later book. Dark Matter was relaunched using the D20 system, and Star Drive was rebranded with D20 Future. There is a new game, also by Richard Baker, called Alternity that just came out, but it has enough mechanical differences that it would be getting its own review rather than me going line by line over the differences. Because you don't want to listen to me for fine-tooth mechanical breakdowns. You listen to me because of my sexy voice and to find the Winona picture. And there she is. Overalls, nice touch. Even her moles are sexy. Anyways, back to Alternity. Alternity was almost a game out of time. It was coming literally at the end of TSR, before being flipped to Wizards and the future of D&D. It tried to be multiple settings at once, with mixed results. Star Drive couldn't compete with Traveler. Dark Matter came in at the tail end of the grim dark darkness of the grim dark 90s, but didn't manage to miss the fat entirely. The game was strip mined into D20 Modern, and the system itself is now back on the shelves with an all-new version. It was a decent mechanical set, but one that took a lot of pages to fully cover. Still, if you want a crunchy system to run your space opera or conspiracy theory game, you can still buy the original books cheap. Next Mad Musings, I'm putting on my black pants and looking at one of Gary Gygax's old shames, Cyborg Commando. It's got cyborgs. It's got commandos. It's got multiplication charts. It's got an inverted exponential combat resolution mechanic. It's got problems. It might have cyborgs going commando. But until then, choose to believe. <laughs>